On today's show, here we go. Traditional teaching goes right out the door. Take it out and just put it to the side. Mr. Waltz found a new way to educate his kids. He surprised us with the ice house and the boat. <laughs> and we meet another teacher, actually the professor. Ah, there we go. Steve Quinn earned the title of bass professor. You got good timing. And find out how to master the art of fly fishing. We get you started. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hey everybody, Laura and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. Most Minnesota third graders take daily lessons in reading, writing, and math. Yeah, but one Brooklyn Park teacher decided to add another subject. Mr. Waltz decided to bring the outdoors into his classroom. Out Door education, rather elementary at Palmer Lake. Wait, I know what you like. You like when we got back in the room, didn't you, Alex? This is a story about one teacher's passion. What are things that you like the best? Not that long ago, Mr. Waltz, as the kids know him, had a bit of an outdoor epiphany. He thinks he might have figured out a way to better teach kids. <laughs> Seems like his idea worked hook, line, and sinker. It's great because you walk in and it immediately catches your attention and you wonder what's this room all about, what's this teacher all about. And then one day in second grade he surprised us with the ice house and the boat. Teacher Waltz's boat, a real boat. My old duck boat is in there. First duck boat I went duck hunting in with my dad. When he decided to design his classroom, he really looked at ways to bring in the outdoors to his classroom. An idea based off what educators call the learning studio model. It gets rid of traditional school desks and chairs and offers a different environment for kids to learn. I also have my first ice fishing house. Stools in there with a the little light. They can go in there if they wish. The kids are able to choose their spots and do the activities that they want to do in, in a more comfortable, less structured setting. There's choices that come along with this, and I think that that's good to empower them. Remember when we planted before, what did, what did we look at? How did we what Mr. Waltz cannot bring indoors, he instead takes his kids out to. We're going to go out and plant the sunflower seeds. Here we go. Today, the kids dirty their hands in a simple garden. See a rock, what can you do with the rock? Take it out and just put it to the side. Are we going to throw the rock? No. Teacher hopes students will watch seeds sprout and eventually flourish, much like their own learning curve. No eating any of the bugs. We're having lunch and you don't want to ruin your lunch today. Aww. I know, I know, they're extra protein. Just something else for the kids to do and enjoy nature a little bit more. I just thought it would be an easy thing. We can measure it. We did some graphing last year with it, and it was something fun for the kids. Well, Mr. Waltz has a great passion for teaching, and he is an, a lover of the outdoors, and so he's found a way to really meld his love for teaching with a love for outdoors. In the classroom, just watch. The unique prompts sure look like they work. Every time I come in from recess, this is where my place where I always relax. Because I like the pillows and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm working on what we did when we went to the courtyard and we planted like pumpkins, sunflowers, and other kind of plants. Yeah. I think it helps the kids not be put in such a strict space. They can go and they can move around and it just gives them an opportunity to go and sit and be comfortable and do their work. A teacher hoped he might make a difference in the classroom. Mr. Waltz got more than he bargained for. It's been neat for me to try, you know, to pass along some of that outdoor knowledge. Look at that mama. Coming up, class is back in session, this time on the water. Meet Minnesota's fishing professor next. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. 
Alumacraft, Radco Truck Accessories, and by Kinetico. It's time for Ron Shera to head back to school. And guess what? I happen to know his teacher, actually the professor, the professor of Minnesota Bass. Yeah, we've got more like a nine foot ledge. Here, let's try this one. Oh, look at that bait fish. Oh, there's a school and a half. Call it a professorial observation by Minnesota's professor of bass fishing. You gotta keep looking. I won't stay long if I don't get a bite. Yet another bass catching lesson from the bass professor, AKA Steve Quinn. Bass fanatics will recognize the name. For 29 years, Quinn has been writing about bass and how to catch them in the nation's leading freshwater fishing magazine, In Fisherman, based in Brainerd. You ever fish just for the fun of it, Steve? Oh yeah, I love to get out and just do some exploring. I love to go to a new lake. We'll move up the river a little bit and uh, see if we can find some. Mm, good idea, Professor. That's your Mississippi fish there. So what's unique about the smallmouth? Well, it's, you know, grew up as a river fish, and today some of our best fisheries are, you know, well known as lakes, but the, they're really a fish of current. All right, there we go. Steve Quinn's affection for bass is even more surprising when you learn where the love affair all began. Uh, Manhattan. In New York City. What? <laughs> that, that always gets them. <laughs> you grew up in Manhattan? Yes, sir. The first bass I caught was actually in the Saranac River in upstate New York. One day I hooked into this really nice, probably 14 inch smallmouth bass. It seemed huge at the time. And it was like, it was jumping along. Oh, look what I got. I got this bass. And well, that was it. And then Steve the Bass Nut went on to Dickinson College in Pennsylvania. I was hooked on fishing. I thought, well, I'll just go into college and major in English and become an outdoor writer, just like that. It didn't quite work out that well. Actually, it worked out better. In addition to his writing skills, Steve eventually received a biology degree with a master's in fisheries. In Fisherman Editor-in-Chief, Doug Stangy. Well, he's one of the most remarkable uh, individuals you could ever hope to work with. Remarkable in the sense that not only is he a great fisherman, not only is it, you know, he understands everything there is to know about bass fishing, but he's also got this incredible science background. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a beauty. The professor is coming through. That's a pig. There we go. <laughs> Now they're coming alive. She's coming up. Oh yeah, beautiful. Did you beat me, Professor? Well, this looks awful close. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple of beauties here. Oh hum, just another day of catching bass for the Professor of Bass. With all the bass fishing you've done, there's got to be one bass that is the biggest of them all that you've caught. Smallmouth. The biggest smallmouth was in one of what, what I considered the best big smallmouth place that I'd ever been, and that's the eastern end of Lake Erie. And all of a sudden, this one came aboard, and it had been the two bait, 7.3 pounds or 7.5, you know. But Steve Quinn remains in love with his home waters of Minnesota. I've never been anywhere where you can't consistently go and catch so many quality fish under almost any conditions. These fish are just prolific. But I think with the conservation ethic that we have in our fishermen today, so few people are killing the big bass. Just one more fishing lesson from the professor. 
only about five things you need to get going. Still ahead, we help introduce you to the sport of fly fishing. Closed captioning is brought to you by Minnesota Rebat. The art of the perfect cast. Yes, I love fly fishing, but for a lot of people when they get started, it can be pretty intimidating, right? That's right, and that's exactly why I went to a St. Paul fly shop to learn the ins and outs of fly fishing. Watching a fly fisherman on the water is similar to watching a rhythmic dance. If you've ever wanted to experience this, I am here at Bob Mitchell's Fly Shop to show you how you can get started. Hi Robert. Hey, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming in, Laura. Thanks yeah. for having us. So sure. I am here to figure out how to get started fly fishing because mm -hmm. I have heard that there's a lot of this stuff and equipment that's needed to do this sport. Is that true? Uh, yes and no. You can actually do it really simply. You don't need a lot of stuff. There's really only about five things you need to get going. Five simple things? Yep. All right, well let's <laughs> check them out. All right, cool. Well, number one thing you need is your rod. Yes. Um, and with fly fishing, you just pick the rod that's right for what you want to fish for. So say you want to fish for trout or maybe some bass, like a six weight rod is a great place to start. Um, uh, just a nice entry level rod, it's 90 bucks and it'll get the job done. So you don't need to spend a fortune. And then you just pick the rod for what kind of fish you want to fish for. So this is a little light three weight, so this would be a great panfish rod. This one's a six weight, which is more for trout and bass. And then you can go up to the big guy, a, a 10 weight, which is, we do a lot of pike and musky fishing on fly rods around here, so. Next thing you need, number two. So number one rod, number two is a reel. And basically with reels, same thing. You just pick the right size reel for the rod you're gonna use and uh, you're off and running. And of course we need fishing line. Yep, so number three, you have to put the line on your reel. So again, you pick the, the line that is appropriate for what you're fishing for. So this is a, a trout fly line. You throw it on a five weight reel. Um, this is more like your pike musky line. So guys that are chasing pike and muskies on the fly rod, that's a good way to go too. Um, and then on the end of your fly line, so you got rod, reel, line. Um, on the end of your line, you throw on a leader. So this attaches right to the end of the fly line. And last but not least, I'm assuming we need yep. a fly on the end of our yep. leader, Number yes? Number five, you gotta throw a fly on the end of your leader. So we've got examples of flies right here. Um, we've got some bass poppers. Little eggs, you know, if you're going up steelhead and up by the brule. These are like little midge patterns, so believe it or not, fish eat, that kind of stuff. And so for today's purposes, since we're just getting started, we are gonna go fishing for panfish, you said? Yep, we're gonna go up to Lake Como, just 10 minutes from the shop here. We're gonna awesome. throw a little three weight rod like this one um, and try to catch a couple sunfish if we can. Yes, all right, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Okay. So to get going, you hold a line in your left hand and the rod in your right hand, and you go back to, uh, what would that be, two, and then, is that my, my yep, clock Yeah, that's two. Right? No, yeah, there you go. Right. Forward to 10. Back to two, forward to 10. The key to this is letting the line completely straighten out on both sides. So see how I'm waiting? So all the way out, all the way out. Should I give it a try? Yeah, so let's give it a try. <laughs> 10. And forward, let go. Back, forward, let go. But that's looking pretty good. You got good timing. Yep, perfect. That's looking good. This other this little angle again. Oh, yeah. Look at this little baby guy. You know what? The best thing about fly fishing, it really doesn't matter the size of the fish, it's the excitement of them going for the fly and you having to react to it at the perfect right time to yeah. actually get it on the end of your line. Yep. Right, Here's my, my first pan fish on a fly rod. <laughs> yeah, nice, first pan fish on the fly, Thank great you. job, he's a good looking yes. little buddy. little guy, but you know what, yeah. it doesn't matter the size as long as we're That's outdoors right. and Just, we're getting started. Yep, yeah, perfect. Thanks for the fun day. You bet, no problem. <laughs> Alright, get little sunny. There he goes. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> 
Coming up, today's Minnesota Bound Classic is all about the river rat. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by By the Yard Maintenance Free Outdoor Furniture, Running Aces Casino and Racetrack, Bent Creek Golf Club Eden Prairie, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world class fishing. Welcome back to the show. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic happens to be one of my dad's favorites. And it might become one of yours too, after Ron Sherry introduces you to a Minnesota storyteller who loves to share his natural world wisdom. For all of his life, Ken Solway has explored the backwaters of the Mississippi River. With Spider the Black Lab, Solway has pulled his way through thousands of acres of islands and channels where the Mississippi flows between Minnesota and Wisconsin. Oh yeah, it took a long time. I walked a lot of circles. But I, I know every, every piece of it. By any definition, Solway is a bona fide river rat. Shot squirrels when I was eight, nine years old with a little single shot 22 and, and always fished and, and and a lot of my relatives lived the way I did do. Solway's one-room shack is a mirror of his life on the Mississippi. Inside, the walls and ceiling are covered with river memories, as well as its drying treasures, delicious morel mushrooms gathered last spring. This is ginseng and plants right here that are drying the plants. Solway says there's a story behind everything he's collected, including his bunk bed. Yeah. As I call this the boar's nest. This is this uh, generally gets made about twice a year, whether it needs it or not. But, but in many ways, Solway is a man from a different time, an earlier time. On a necklace, Solway carries a spiritual symbol, a dried foot of a turtle. The turtle has is a symbol of longevity. The turtle moves very slowly, so do I talk slow, walk slow, drive slow. I believe life's too short to hurry through it. Solway was at home for more than 40 years, content to cook over a wood fire and sustain his body and soul on what the river provides. The venison. This is venison. Making a little gravy here. I was not a good student, to say the least. Always looking out the schoolhouse windows, wanting to be outside. I tried various things, like gainful employment, and I just didn't hit it off real well. Instead of salary and benefits, Solway chose the river, nature study, and reading. Well, the river is, uh, I guess I could liken it to my very blood. I owe much to the river. But over the years, Solway also knew something was wrong upstream. He saw the river's siltation and pollution. He also realized he had to share his love of the river with others. Today, Solway the River Rat has become Solway the River Guide. Anybody know what kind of tree this is? I believe in the young folks. The people have always said the young folks are going to hell in a handcart. We heard it. Every generation hears it. And uh, I believe we same. need to focus on the positive. On a short walk, his nature lessons flow as easily as the river. You know what this is? This is prickly ash. Prickly ash bark is good for toothaches. I believe, like I said, in the, in the children. Education is the key to solving problems. And it's not how we do it, it's whether we do it. And it's not when we do it. It's that we do it sometime. I love that guy. Me too, and it sounds like Kenny is still telling stories. I think so. Well, that about does it for us. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. 
and to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.